There's fish on right there. Whose is that? Woo! Fish on! Joe Simon's like diamonds. Whoa. We're here. We got fish Down everywhere. in the Keys, we got sharks everywhere. Whoa! We and got <laughs> at least on. one. We had two. We had two. One just got off. We got nice. one on. Right. Nice bonnet. So we're, uh, we're out here just on the flat right in downtown Isla Mirada doing what you have to do some days when it's crazy windy like this. Because it sure beats home. <sighs> nice little go? bonnet head. Luke, you had one on too? We had one running. Oh. He ran all up in here and we somehow, crazy. somehow cool your part brother is. lost another fish is what he's trying to tell you. Oh boy. Oh boy. So here with Captain Mark Holly. Woo! Woo! Johnson. We got Luke and we got Richard who's, if you're listening. Finally, Richard's finally catching the fish today. Finally. They're nice. Nice bonnet head. Nice. All right, you got him closed. I'm yeah, the cool part is out. just throwing some shrimp out here. Just soaking some shrimp. Catch all shrimps. kinds of different fish, including bonefish. All Pretty right. neat. All and right, these are Richard, fun since you caught here. him, you want to grab him? Sure. All right, so behind the head, man of your talents, okay? So don't try this at home, boys and girls, but when you grab one of these guys, you grab him right behind the head. All right. Oh, he's not done. All right. <laughs> oh boy, Richard's getting in close. Perfect. All right. Well, that's one way to let him go. <laughs> Next time I'll do it. He's still fired up. All right. Good work. All right. Good work. So, no shortage of things to catch out here. You know, sometimes, like we said, the weather's less than perfect, and you got to get it done. This is a great opportunity to come out here, have a couple cold beers with your buddies, play some tunes, catch some fish, make fun of Richard, whatever you want to do. Come out here and just make it the best time you can. And that is what fishing is all about. All right, so let's talk about the rig. What are we using here? So this is Richard's secret rig. It has an invisible hook. Ooh. It works every time. It works every time. He has yet to miss a fish or catch one. <laughs> so we're going to put a Hollywood hook on there and see what's next. <laughs> All right, All right you so hold this, we, we shall walk return. us through here. We're in a couple feet of water. You can see the channel over here if you're watching. And yeah, we put a couple, a couple shots, split shots. A little bait uh, saver, one on bait saver hook we talked about eagle, with eagle the barbs claw. on the back. Yeah, these are eagle claw. All right, let me have your uh, leader there. And we have a uh, three lines out. We had a little bit of a chum slick with some pieces some of shrimp. shrimp. Yeah. Five turn anti slip knot. You and hope. the wind is cranking here today. Yeah. If you were listening in. Small gusting 25. All right. Remember, folks, always clip your tag in, but just once you always pull it tight first. And you clip it, you always just leave that little bit. The last thing you want to do is have a fish come off and bring in a pigtail on the line that shows that you're not slipped. Mm. Mm. The guys in the boat might not let you ride home with them. No. Nope. All right, split shot in. Six, seven inches from the shrimp on the hook. Ta-da. Because it is gale force conditions, we're gonna go with the two split shots. All right, Ooh. two split shots, hook, right. and just like that, we're going to have a shrimp close by in the well of the old Murata 24. Nice frisky live shrimp. Look at this view out here. Woo! Okay, folks, here we go. One more time. Bait saver hook. You can see the barbs on the back. Got your frisky live shrimp from the tackle center. In the back. Bend the shrimp up around the shank of the hook. You're trying to keep as much hook inside the bait that keeps from falling off when you're casting. Bend it all the way around, then when you run out of hook, give it a little bit of tweak and get that point to come out the side. Now the whole hook's covered. You're out the side, your split shots are good. That's a pretty durable bait. It's ready to get cast. Let's do it. All right, Richard, are you safe to cast this? All right. <laughs> So what, else, a dull moment. so what else you catch out here? We talked about bonnets, obviously, bonefish. Bonefish, bonnet head sharks. You can catch a boxfish, a mangrove snapper, small mutton snapper sometimes, houndfish, needlefish. Uh, you might even catch a jack. They come up on the flat sometimes. Small stingrays will eat a shrimp. Uh, 
anywhere in South Florida, there's always a list of possibilities of what you might catch in every application of fishing. But here we are again, only in two feet of water, on a flat, fishing simple with shrimp, close to home. And if you look around, you'll see a couple other guys doing the exact same thing, just because that's what conditions allow for today. Couple cold beers, tunes on, fishing with your buddies, you're out here getting it done. It sure beats the hotel room no matter where you stay. Amen. Amen. All right, here we go. You already put it out? We got three lines out. Three lines out. See what Some happens. a couple shrimps. And so let's talk about that. So when we pepper the area, as we do, you get a handful of shrimp. Woo, livey. Oh, oh one boy. got away. And all you're trying to do, folks, is just break these in small pieces, three or four pieces of shrimp, and you pepper them out in front of the boat, going downwind, down current, to put some smell out there, to bring in a bonefish, a shark, any of the creatures that come in here, and then they find your bait. And that's the trick. So every few minutes, just a handful of pieces, left, center, right, all the way around, so that all your baits are in the zone. Gosh, that's pretty out here. See how nice that looks? So good. Now we just need a bonefish or a shark or a snapper. Somebody come in and bite and see if Richard can't catch another one. And so how did you pick this spot? That's the question we always get. Why this spot? So today, with the conditions we have, with the wind howling and, and the tide going the same way, I know that this flat can be very productive on the high tide, and it also is easy accessible for my bay boat. Because a boat of this size, you have to be very careful when you put it on the flat. You notice we used our trolling motor. We did not motor in with the big motor. And I know as the tide comes up, no matter what, we have an escape route to get off to the deep water, which is a dark green. Minimal chance of us disturbing the bottom in any unprofessional way. And we're close to home, productive, tide, wind, sun, everything going the right direction for us. All we need now is the fish. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Hey, uh, off topic, let's talk about some of your recent travels. Oh, Panama, oh, Cuba. Oh, yeah, so. Because everyone always asks about, hey, where, where, so where should finally, I go if I could pick anything? And Hollywood, you've been to some cool Hollywood spots Hollywood's notorious here. for getting invited to all kinds of places and always having to say no because he's working. So his last few months after the COVID experience and all the things going on, I finally had the opportunity to say yes. So I was able to go with a group of 11. We went to Cuba in December and did a week's worth of flat fishing with the Avalon Fishing Group. And it was fantastic. We were on a mothership. We had great guides. We were seven hours sailing with the mothership away from Cuba down in the National Park. And uh, it was just fantastic. And what, what really brought it home for me is that the area we fished, the flats, the coral, the grass, was so undisturbed. That's how the keys were when I was a kid. And that was just really exciting to see, but also sad to see how our whole environment and stuff has taken the beating over the years. But bonefish, permits, tarpons, mutton snappers, yellow jacks, all fly fishing. We had just a great, great time. Fast forward three weeks, we ended up in Guatemala, fly fishing for sailfish. And again, great experience, good travel, fished with great outfit down there, Captain Brad Phillips' guys, uh, Guatemala sailfishing, and catch a few sailfish on the fly rod. And again, I've never had the chance to go to Guatemala, and we managed to get that done. Fast forward another three weeks, I was in Panama. And that was a little different offshore fishing. We were, did the rooster fish, was one of the two fish left on Hollywood's bucket list. That's cool. Had a chance to go down there to catch rooster fish. We caught a blue trevally. We caught a couple other interesting snapper species. Uh, the guys that I were with, a couple big yellowfin tunas, a black marlin, a sailfish. And the lodge that we stayed at, Toucan Sport Fishing with Captain Juan. He's a friend of mine from Louisiana fishes with myself and Carter. So you're down there with people that you know, and we just had we just had the best time. So it was a treat to go. I got three trips out of the way. I got stink eye from the wife when I got home. So now we're back to work. <laughs> uh, now back to fishing again. Yeah, right. Yes. Some people call it fishing, we call it work, but we love it either way. Uh, uh, uh. So if you guys, anybody that is looking to go fishing abroad, 
don't be afraid to reach out because if I'm not able to put a trip together for you, I know people that can. We fished the Bahamas. We've been to Cuba now more than once. We got Panama, Guatemala, uh, up the coast, even Cape Cod. We have, we have people we know in the industry worldwide. If you want to go fishing, we can point if you If someone right can direction. only pick one of those, what would you say? I, I know they're all completely different experiences. They're all completely different, but if you want to inshore fish and catch a bonefish and see that fishery, Cuba was fantastic. Cool. Yeah, I've Bahamas heard that. Bahamas is the same way, just a lot easier to get to. If you want to do the offshore experience, fly fishing for sailfish, Guatemala is, is world famous for that. Panama offers a different experience. They don't really fly fish there or have the sail fishing numbers where we were, but the giant, we caught one Kubera snapper with 65 pounds, a yellowfin tunas, a black marlin, the rooster fish was, was just an awesome experience. And Panama is very user friendly for the gringo travelers. It's very Americanized, same time zone. You're not allowed to say gringo, it could offend someone on this podcast. Oh, okay. For it's very Americanized. Let's go with that. Gringo list. But the US dollar works the same time zone. You feel very safe. <laughs> Guatemala is a little different. You stay on the compound, you don't leave. And in Cuba, you're never on land except to catch a flight. Unless you identify as a gringo, then it's okay. Yeah. If you, yeah. So there's three different yeah. experiences, three different places. <laughs> Managed to catch fish in all three. Did you go to the Panama awesome. Canal? We did. So because we were in Panama, we stayed, stayed an extra two or three days to tour it. We hooked up with some fantastic tour guides that really took care of my cousin and I with cold beers, great places to eat. We did Panama Canal. We went and saw Noriega's house from when we may or may not have been there in the late 80s on a small little exercise. We got to see all kinds of really cool things in Panama. And uh, we enjoyed it tremendously. It's your redheaded cousin? Yeah. I did drink some beer. He, yeah, he's been known to drink some beer. <laughs> I've heard stories. Yeah. So it was really just a really good time. Redheaded gringo cousin, if you're listening, <laughs> we want you on our next trip. <laughs> Comes a little skiff. Yeah. We've seen a bunch of them today. They were uh, they were getting beat up. Yes, they were. Today is not a skiff friendly rough around day. the bridges there fishing for tarpoons. Other than the wind, I mean, look at this. So beautiful. Yeah, we've got a little flat. break in the sun. I might sun even get my up. jacket off today. I it's know. possible. And we've had jackets on all day here in late April. Woo. Look in the bait box, see what's here. Oh, look, bait. Oh, whoa, whammy. Hey, bluegills, bluegills. Bait. bait for the wind. What we called them in growing up in Winter Haven, Florida, on the lakes. That's one of the best day drinking beers of all time. If you want to. Fall else that, fails. Drink beer when we you would, fish. Uh, we love any healthy debate on best day drinking beer. <laughs> and we have not found anything better than Bush Light. Bush Light, Bud Light, and Team of Look Champions. at these cans, if you guys haven't seen them. It's actually got a largemouth bass, and it says brewed for fishermen right at the top. So I weird. mean, it's like it's speaking just to for us. us. Brewed for fishermen. They're smart. And you guys, I've told you about it. I ha we, we look for them in, in Publix here in Isla Mirada. They didn't have it, but Bush Latte. The latte in the 16 ounce aluminum bottles. Woo! I know. Those are for the high dollar fishermen on the big sport fish. Man. Bush <laughs> latte. It's like they've been listening to me for decades. Mm. L A T T E. So uh, you just sit here and wait. Yeah, so with the, the affectionate term for this is called booger fishing. Ah. And it takes the sight casting errors and all the things out of play and usually when it's really cloudy and windy and crappy instead of trying to force the sight fish you can post up somewhere put some baits out and we call him rodney rod holder let rodney do the work rods in the rod holder drags are set baits are sitting on the bottom you just put your feet up relax and if you get a bite rodney will let you know we've already caught a couple sharks we've seen a handful more sliding around and uh sun's coming out and uh beer is ice cold mm. Uh, how, how do you even sight fish bonefish when it's blowing 20 plus like this? So wow. you'll see some 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 hardcore guys try to do it as long as the sun's out. The wind you can deal with if you have the visibility. If it gets cloudy, then you can't see it all. The wind makes it hard too. But you can pole boats in the wind, crosswind. You can see fish on the flats. If you get lucky enough, they're mudding or something. 
and try to cast the shrimp. You don't have near the mobility with pulling the boat like you do on a nice day, yeah. but there are a lot of guys that just insist on sight fishing. Now, I'm gonna turn around just so people can see what's happening behind us. I mean, this wind is just cranking. Look how horrible it looks here versus out here. Kind of like facing this way. Yeah. Well, you? So we hang out in the front of the big 24 Murata, big and comfy, put the tunes on, drink a beer. It could even be a public sub in our future. Oh, oh, nice. Great way to spend a Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. Not a bad Tuesday at all. Not a bad Tuesday. And, so and if, talk the weather about... really, if, the, if the weather really goes south and the front comes through and, it, and the clouds and the rain and lightning, we're, uh, we're a half a mile from the dock. Yeah, and we did another podcast, if you haven't watched it, on the bridge, just fishing the bridge with old Power Prawn Juniors. Yeah, that was really impressive. My first time seeing the Power Prawn USA. Power Prawn USA Junior. Sorry, Luke. And I was really impressed with that today. We fished that whole podcast with not one piece of bait. And only went through a couple of shrimp and caught who knows how many fish. Yeah, I and a think, lot of it was because of how Luke you was twelve to fifteen fish on that one shrimp before the stingray came and uh, ran off with his one. And then Luke got mad at you for how you unhooked a fish. Uh, he's like, uh, <laughs> Luke. But uh, the yellow jacks were impressive today. A couple look downs we caught were big. The big mangrove snappers. Luke had a couple taco size for sure. And then I want to say, did did Richard catch a fish? Did you catch a yellowtail? Right, a big yellowtail. Yeah, man proper size yellowtail in a mangrove. Yeah. So interesting enough, folks, is that we did all that fishing this morning Ooh. without one piece of bait. And that, to me, is just a treat. And then another fun thing was just getting some mullet and yeah. trolling them through a little small oh, yeah. channel, random channel. Yeah, yesterday. Yeah, so we made Luke do the hard work through the new net I got, a mullet net. And uh, good throw, caught a dozen or so, solid, maybe, maybe 15. And Lunker, we, dog, Lunker dog would have been proud. Run that dog. Went out back. We, uh, we did a little show on how to tie a stinger rig, and uh, we slow trolled some live mullet around, and we had some pretty, pretty exciting jumbo barracuda action. May or may not have been Joe's a sighting of Joe Simon's getting his butt kicked on his bait caster. We had a couple come off. We had a couple with some good jumps, and I think we got a nice one for the camera, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, the, it was cool to catch them on old bait caster too. And you can see the whole thing. They chase the mullet around. They, they're excited. They want to eat it. It was very visual. Uh, a fun thing we do with clients a lot, especially yep. on the light tackle. I lost a big one. Well, you don't uh, have to mention that, but you did. Uh, Snap me right off. Crazy how, uh, how much power, how fast those barracuda oh. are. So in the last few years, we're seeing more and more barracudas showing up in the bay. And all of the scientists are telling us it's because of the saltwater intrusion up in the national park area. Because we're seeing cooters like we've never seen before. And you're seeing big ones. What do you mean by saltwater intrusion from the park? So the national park, you ever go to the national park, which is out here behind us where we were fishing I'm yesterday. familiar with it. I've heard of it. Yeah, seen it's it on weird. The map. It's out there, 900 square miles of it, right? <laughs> but traditionally it's very brackish and has a lot of fresh water and not to get into all the trials and tribulations of our water quality issues but the salt water from the Gulf as well as the Atlantic is infiltrating deeper and deeper into the park with less and less fresh water being available to the park so what is that is doing in turn is allowing creatures who are not so freshwater tolerant like a barracuda to infiltrate the park deeper and deeper back that's the best way to say that in layman's terms. Got it. It's pretty clear. That's pretty clear. But yeah, that's a fun trip in. too. Going over here and fishing with Florida Keys Fun Fish and then doing a uh, trip over to Flamingo. Going into the park. Absolute blast. I mean, you get to see, we, what, cro we had the crocodile come up and try to eat the branch that Luke had actually foul hooked. Uh, you remember, like, that was right. nuts. That was right. That was crazy. That was the day we saw Mr. Rick Murphy, right? Came in behind us and waved and went by. After we outfished him. Well, yeah, we didn't have to, yeah. Rick was a little grouchy. We were catching Super all those snook in front of him. Like on in the his bomber, face. right? We were throwing the bomber, that's right. Yeah, yeah he had live bait. We'll definitely bring it up. I mean, well, yeah. fact's a fact. Any chance I get to right smile and wave us. at Rick, I take full advantage. Trying to film a show. And 
we just but the crocodile is a up. neat creature we see we also have a few here in Ala Mirada. we talked about the sawfish and yeah so when you're in south florida as a whole you you never run out of a chance to see some sort of wildlife whether you're driving down the street walking on the sidewalk out in the boat it's it's everywhere in south florida do you ever catch trout out here on any of these flats by no. i know it's not common but ever nope never never wow you, you won't catch a trout with this much salt water you got to be closer to the park they're all about that any snook ever on these flats ever on the flats no a bridge possibly especially yeah. in the winter time okay now i will tell you years ago you could catch a redfish up on these flats close to home but it was a rarity but none of that's happened in the last 10 or 12 years so you have to make the trip to the park it's a whole different ecosystem with the brackish water the fresh water the grass the mullets the things that those fish like over here as you see all these watercolors and how clear this is this is all ocean influence much more bonefish and permit territory than snook and redfish and trout and a lot of tarpon we saw some good tarpon rolling yeah we yeah we did see some yeah we're getting to time april may june late march i think it was uh, april two years ago where your back still hurts from that big one we caught not far from here mm -hmm. yep and what, what's the story with your uh, captain mike did he work in the everglades like oh so my my newest captain Captain Mike, yes. Yeah. So Mike is a professional snake. Catcher That's what it was. And also an iguana trapper. He lived in the Caymans for 10 years as a fishing guide and a dive instructor. And he uh, travels to exotic places to eradicate iguanas. And what's funny about that is he does it at night because evidently the iguanas sleep in the tree. So they go out at night and they just pick them all out of the tree like mangoes <laughs> off the tree and fill up the pillowcases and they get rid of them. Uh, that's wild. Yeah, so he also chases the pythons in the park. He has all the permits and licenses to do so. And you know what? You go snake hunting one time in South Florida to see what it's like and the creatures you see. I've done it a few times with Tim Borski and some other guys that are really well known for it. Take the kids out there and go do it. You learn so much about the creatures we have. And nowadays, a lot of them are non-native, so you really oh, don't that even one's, know Look at what that rod tip in the middle. It's slow. Oh. Either it's stuck on the bottom or... Yeah, it might be. The boat might have swung around. We'll put my best guy on it. Richard! Richard! Go up there and see what you got. So, when we were kids, you didn't, you never worried about a non-native creature. Now, I might have mentioned I'm old like Christopher Columbus old, but <laughs> in the since the mid-80s and a lot of things that's happened, South Florida is just full of a plethora of non-native species. So when you go snake hunt now, you got to be really careful and go with an expert because you have no idea what you might run into. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be out there by myself. I bet you old Captain Mike, he's got no shoes on. He just looks like... No, no, no. You, you, can't, you can't play that game out there. You got to go. <laughs> they all wear boots and pants and they... Because one, one wrong move out there, you don't have any help. Yeah. You get bit by something you don't want to get bit by. That's no good. No, thank you. No, We're thank watching you. this high. We may just about be out of the tide coming in. So we'll give this a little while longer and then we'll go reset and uh, see what, uh, what else we can catch. So uh, where next? We'll probably uh, end this here. Yeah, so we're going to keep an eye on this weather and we want this tide to be moving. It's one of the things about this kind of fishing though, having tide move when you're chumming is most important. You have to have some current to take the smell of your shrimp. So as we all know, tide goes every six hours, give or take. You have a period of slack tide and then it starts to go again. So we're at the end of the high tide. And so now it's gonna be a little bit of a break and then it'll start to go out toward the bridge. And so we'll uh, reset accordingly. You're watching that piece of, can you see that brown grass right there? Go out, go out, just watch that grass. So you're watching that grass sitting in that chop and it's not moving. So that tells you that we're really about at the slack tide because if the wind can't push it and the tide can't push it. Some more there. That's what we use, that's a telltale sign. Oh, might be time to try a new spot. But this is an easy way to catch some fish, especially, man, for the family. 
Oh, it, Bonnethead we sharks didn't, and stuff. We weren't filming the first part, but uh, right when we got here, there was little bonnetheads around the boat and plucked one off within seconds. That was fun. So I want to catch a bonefish out here. That would be fun. Yeah, so last week we caught uh, we caught four bonefish on Saturday? No, on Friday. We caught four on Friday, two on Thursday. And Saturday, this crazy weather came in, made the water cold, and uh, it's, it's been just, a grind ever since. Yeah, if I just turn around, you can hear it in my mic. It is <laughs> blowing hard. Um, man. Nasty. So, all right, we want comments. We had a couple debates. Best places to go travel for some cool saltwater fishing, and then uh, number one, boat beer. Oh, yeah. That's all you know. There are definitely some categories there. A lot of it's based on the age group, too. The old guys don't drink wheat beer. We like good old-fashioned Bud Light, Bush Light. Some of the young guys are all about a wheat beer, craft beer. We have some amazing breweries here in town. But the old guys tried and true. You never go wrong with a bush light or a bud light. Yeah, I don't really want craft beer when I'm out in the boat all day. Uh, no, no. No. We talked about oh, all the places to eat in town. It's awesome. You guys had some amazing fish tacos at the Shrimp Shack. Yeah, we, we did always. We dinner last night at the Bayside Gourmet, one of our favorite Those are two places. places I come to every time I'm here. Shrimp Shack yes. and Bayside. Bayside Gourmet. Oh, wow. And what are we doing tonight? Something funky. Tonight, something different. So there's a new spot in town called the Alamorada Wine Bar. And you know, Hollywood now is a man of um, class. We'll go with class. Make that up. Sure. <laughs> so I'm going to put down the latte. I'm going to wear a clean shirt. And I'm going to take these boys to the Alamorada Wine yeah. Bar, who's owned by a dear friend of mine, Miss Morgan. And uh, we're going to have a charcuterie board and possibly a nice glass of red wine. And I'm going to woo the Simon brothers with my amazing knowledge of wine, because I now learned it comes in three colors, red, white, and a blend. Kind of cool. <laughs> hey, hey, look over here to the left. Look, 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 that big, long shark. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that man eater. Look at that guy sliding by just inside the edge of that flat. Yep, I, hopefully the camera picks it up. Oh, yeah, you can see can... him, but he's a solid yeah. six, maybe seven feet long. So anyway, tonight is a little bit of uh, duck prosciutto, a little nice All right, let's make truffle, a cast to him. I got a slam shady cheese. on. Oh, no, I don't. Yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't hurt. Nah, throw a shrimp. If anybody can catch him, it's your brother. Yeah, that's a big. Uh, that's a big old shark. Look at him go by. Ooh. All right, look at me get look out of your that. way. There could be some jacks on his back, but see if you see can it? see if you can. Yeah, you can't miss it. 12 o'clock. Throw all the way on his back. Get on his back. Because he might have jacks with him. Yeah, I can't get that far. It was close. Yeah. He's oh, yeah. 12 o'clock. Yeah, that's a big shark. That'll uh, see if he gets far. He's coming a little bit closer to where your shrimp is. Oh, that would be awesome if he hit that. That's a 10-pound braid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's going by. All right. Well, stay tuned for a wine bar. Wine bar tonight. Clean shirt and all. Woo. Might have to put some hair gel in Luke's hair. We'll see. <laughs> all right, guys. Appreciate you big time. And uh, definitely comment below. Let us know if you like these. Just live on the water, just chatting, talking about travel. Well, just all the fun things you do beers. when you're out here. Where to eat, where to fish, what beer to drink. These are the same conversations we have when we're out here. So right. might as well have you. And next time we're going to talk about NFTs and Bitcoin. So uh, nice. stay tuned if you're into... None of us have any idea what we're talking about, but we have thoughts. Lots of thoughts. Luke, what are your thoughts on Bitcoin? A lot of thoughts. A lot of thoughts. Yeah. All right, guys. Hollywood. Woo! We out. Peace, guys. Hollywood. Peace out, everybody. Stay tuned to the next one. Stay tuned.